Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India to step up COVID surveillance as cases increase elsewhere. Deoba elected as Nepali Congress parliamentary leader, set to become PM for sixth time. And UN, US and Britain condemn Taliban suspension of female university students. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia on Wednesday reviewed the COVID-19 situation in India in a meeting with senior officials and experts in the wake of rising infections in some countries. The minister said COVID is not over yet and directed all concerned authorities to step up surveillance. He said we are prepared to manage any situation. India's Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia held a meeting with senior officials and experts on Wednesday to review the COVID-19 situation in the country in the wake of rising cases in other countries, including neighbouring China. Mandavia directed all states to step up surveillance for any new variants and said, COVID is not over yet. But we are prepared to manage any situation, he said. India has reported the most COVID-19 cases in the world after the United States, but its tally of confirmed infections has fallen sharply in the past few months. The COVID-19 cases are increasing in the country. It has been taken care of. It has been done with a good systematic review. It has been done with a deep dive. And its implications for our country have been talked about it. और उसके बेस के ऊपर रणनीति हमेशा से ही रही है चल भी रही है हमने कभी हमेशा से ही माना है कि वायरस अभी गया नहीं है और सिस्टेमैटिक तरीके से उसको हम रिस्पॉन्स रखी हुई है उसकी सबकी समीक्षा हुई है अ रिसेंट सर्ज ऑफ इन्फेक्शन इन जापान द यूएस कोरिया ब्राजील एंड इन नेबरिंग चाइना आफ्टर इट एंडेड इट स्ट्रिक्ट कोविड रिस्ट्रिक्शन हैज लेड टू कंसर्न दैट न्यू वेरियंट्स गुड इमर्ज Globally, some 3.5 million cases are being recorded every week. The Indian government has also urged people to wear masks in crowded areas. We should always wear masks and use sanitizers. We should always wear masks. Because if the corona is increasing in China, then there are chances that it can be in Delhi. So we should always wear masks every week. We should always wear masks in crowded areas. We should always wear masks and use sanitizers. India is recording about 1,200 new infections every week. The country of nearly 1.4 billion people has administered more than 2.2 billion COVID vaccine doses. India's northern city of Gorakhpur witnessed a dozen vehicles colliding with each other in early hours of Wednesday due to low visibility caused by dense fog. Several cities in northern India were also covered in thick blanket of fog as winter sets in the region. The weather office has predicted the situation to continue for the next few days. Dense fog hovering over India's northern Gorakhpur city caused over a dozen vehicles to collide on Wednesday. The incident took place on Tenua Toll Plaza and Bagagara Four Line after vehicles including buses, trucks and pickup vehicles collided one after the other due to low visibility. Some passengers were reportedly injured and rushed to hospital for treatment, while stranded passengers lit bonfires to keep themselves warm. कुहरे की वजह से घटना हुई है सुबह में जब लगभग पहली लड़ाई तो हमको लगता है छह बजे के आसपास हुई होगी उसके बाद लगातार दो अभी आठ बजे तक गाड़ियां लड़ी हैं लगभग बारह तेरह गाड़ियां लड़ी हैं जिसमें तीन ठो ट्रक थे आपस में लड़े फिर उसके पीछे बस एक बस तो पलट गई एक बस में थोड़ी सी बाएं से लड़ाया वो निकल गया लेके उसके बाद दो पिकअप अभी देखिए पिकअप यहाँ पड़ी हुई है थिक फॉग ऑल्सो कवर दी स्काईज ऑफ नॉर्थ वेस्ट इन राजस्थान पंजाब एंड हरियाणा एज विंटर सेट्स फुट इन द रीजन बी एस एफ सोल्जर्स वीन पेट्रोलिंग द इंडिया पाकिस्तान बॉर्डर इन अटारी एम लो विजिबिलिटी 
Meanwhile, with cold temperature and low visibility, residents of New Delhi also continue to suffer from pollution as air quality index of the Indian capital remains in very poor category. It is very bad with the smoke. 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 The Indian Meteorological Department has predicted dense fog to continue for next few days in northern parts of India, with the intensity and spread gradually weakening. Moving on, Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Deoba is set to return for the sixth time as the Prime Minister after getting elected as the party's parliamentary leader on Wednesday. The constitution allows leader of the largest party in the Nepal parliament to form a government. With no power sharing deal decided between the allies, Deoba owns the highest stake to be the next prime minister. Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Deoba is set to become the prime minister of Nepal for a sixth time after winning the party's parliamentary election on Wednesday. Dioba, who was contesting against party's general secretary, Kagan Thapa, secured 64 votes out of 89, while Thapa managed to get support from 25 lawmakers of his party. The Himalayan nation's constitution mandates political parties to elect parliamentary leader who becomes eligible for the office of prime minister. As no party has secured a clear majority in recent elections, Nepali Congress parliamentary leader will soon be sworn in as a prime minister. The country's constitution allows the leader of the majority party in parliament to form the government. The alliance led by Nepali Congress secured 136 seats in the November 20 election, two less than the required majority in the 275-member parliament. With first meeting of newly elected House of Representatives being called for Thursday, Dioba will be aiming to gain support from smaller parties in order to remain in power. President Bindya Devi Bhandari has given an ultimatum until December 25th to stake a claim for PM's post. Nepal has seen 10 government changes since the abolition of 239-year-old monarchy in 2008. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has termed the Banu Counter-Terrorism Department hostage incident alarming for his country. Speaking at a US-based think tank, Bilawal said action against extremism, especially the outlawed organizations like the Pakistani Taliban, should be strictly enforced. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Tuesday termed the Banno Counter-Terrorism Department CTD hostage situation alarming for Pakistan, saying that strict actions needed to be enforced on outlawed extremist organizations such as Tahrike Taliban Pakistan or TTP. Bilawal, speaking at US-based think tank Atlantic Council, said situation is better in Pakistan than 2007 adding that Pakistan is serious about eradicating terrorism from the country and has played a key role in establishing peace in the region. Linking the security stability with business opportunities in the country, he said those opportunities can be at a risk if the terrorism goes unchecked. Uh, I believe um, that the recent uh, events in the region that you're referring to are alarming. Um, not only the border incident, but the recent uh, the 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 Banu, Banu incident, at which our, uh, our 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 security commanders have very bravely managed to overcome that specific threat. But absolutely, we have to impress uh, on our neighbours, on Afghanistan, uh, that they have to work to demonstrate that they have the will and the capacity to take on uh, the TTP or other uh, groups functioning from there. Meanwhile, Major General Ahmad Sharif, Director General of Pakistan Army's Media Wing ISPR, on Tuesday informed three security officials and 25 TTP militants were killed during the hostage situation in Bannu. There were 35 terrorists under investigation in the CTD compound where one of them snatched a weapon from a CTD officer and got his allies freed, he said. The TTP or Pakistani Taliban is a banned outfit in Pakistan which has been engaged in armed battle against the South Asian nation. While they are not directly affiliated with the Afghanistan's rulers, TTP pledges allegiance to them. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's Taliban rulers on Tuesday suspended access to universities by female students until further notice. 
a move which has drawn strong condemnation from the United States, Britain and the United Nations. Foreign governments have said that a change in policies on women's rights is needed before they can consider formally recognizing the Taliban-run administration. Afghanistan's Taliban-run Higher Education Ministry on Tuesday suspended access to universities by female students until further notice in accordance with a cabinet decision, drawing strong condemnation from the United States, Britain and the United Nations. The announcement by the Taliban administration came as the United Nations Security Council met in New York on Afghanistan. Foreign governments, including the United States, have said that a change in policies on women's education is needed before it can consider formally recognizing the Taliban-run administration, which is also subject to heavy sanctions. U.S. Deputy U.N. Ambassador Robert Wood described the move as absolutely indefensible, while Britain's envoy Barbara Woodward said, Without fair and impartial justice systems and access to education, there can be no self-reliant, prosperous Afghanistan. The head of the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan, Rosa Utanbaeva, said the move has undermined the Taliban's relationship with the international community, causing damage today that will be felt long into the future. As long as girls remain excluded from school, and the de facto authorities continue to disregard other stated concerns of the international community, we remain at something of an impasse. In March, the Taliban drew criticism from many foreign governments and some Afghans for making a U-turn on signals that all girls' high schools would be opened. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. In news from Sri Lanka, the National Consumer Price Index of Sri Lanka eased year-on-year year to 65% in November after a 70.6% jump in October, the country's statistics department said on Wednesday. Sri Lanka has been struggling with soaring inflation for nearly a year now amid the worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka's National Consumer Price Index, NCPI, is year-on-year to 65% in November after a 70.6% jump in October, the Statistics Department said on Wednesday. Food prices were up 69.8% in November, while non-food inflation was 60.4%. The Department of Census and Statistics of the crisis-struck nation said in a statement. The NCPI captures broader retail price inflation across the island nation and is released with a lag of 21 days every month. Sri Lanka has been struggling with soaring inflation for nearly a year, partly triggered by its worst financial crisis in seven decades and an ill-thought-out ban on chemical fertilizer implemented last year which has since been reversed. Kashmiri saffron is one of the world's most expensive spices which requires a lot of patience and care to grow. A software engineer turned farmer in India's Pune city is growing the spice in a shipping container without soil using high-tech machines. Have a look. Selesh Modak, a software engineer turned farmer in India's Pune city, is growing saffron, one of the world's most expensive spices, which requires a lot of patience and care to grow in a shipping container using high-tech machines. Kashmiri saffron, known in old Kashmiri texts as lover spice, is used extensively in Indian cuisine. Modak brought seeds from Kashmir and by using aeroponic technology, the process of growing plants in the air or mist environment without soil, he has grown the crop in just 160 square feet area in just more than a month. Modak uses various high-tech devices to make a suitable environment for crops in the container. Place this uh, com in August actually August 8th and within one and a half month, so during uh, September and or October mid, uh, the flowering started and uh, we have harvested um, uh, this uh, first crop successfully in this container actually. So we are expecting around 1 and 1.25 kg of uh, uh, saffron from here. Though saffron is grown in other parts of the world, 
The growers say Kashmiri saffron costs more because of its superior quality and the labor-intensive process of picking, drying and packing. One kilogram of Kashmiri saffron costs nearly 3,628 US dollars in domestic and international markets. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.